Hello friends, I am Adrija. Welcome to my study room. Today we are going to discuss about heterotrophic mode of nutrition. In the previous video, we discussed about autotrophic mode of nutrition. If you want to see that video, then please click on the link in the description given below. So let's start. Let's begin with heterotrophic mode of nutrition. The mode of nutrition in which living organisms depend on other living organisms for food is known as heterotrophic mode of nutrition. This is the definition of heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Over here, hetero means hetero means another and trophic means to feed. So, it is the mode of nutrition in which a living organism depends on another living organism for food as they cannot make their own food. And the organisms that exhibit this kind of nutrition are known as heterotrophs. For example, we the human beings, we cannot make our own food, so we have to depend on other living organisms for food. In this chapter, we are going to learn about the heterotrophic mode of nutrition found in plants. So let's discuss about the different types of heterotrophic plants. The first one is parasitic plants. These plants exhibit heterotrophic mode of nutrition. The parasitic plants live and feed on other plants and derives nutrition from them. For example, Cascuta, Rafflesia, etc. They are some parasitic plants. And the plants that derive nutrition from other plants are called parasites. And the plant from which the parasite derives its nutrition are called host. So um, over here, let's take the example of Cascuta. Cascuta is a yellow twinning plant that is generally found in treetops. And it absorbs the nutrients from its host using some special roots. And now let's take the example of Rafflesia. Rafflesia is also a parasitic plant and it has the biggest and heaviest flower. And there are some plants that are partial parasitic plants. For example, mistletoe. Mistletoe is a partial parasitic plant as it depends on its host partially. Um, it can make its own food but it have to depend on its host for water and minerals. So mistletoe is a partial parasitic plant. The next one is insectivorous plants. These plants also exhibit heterotrophic mode of nutrition. The insectivorous plants feed on insects by trapping and digesting them. For example, pitcher plant, venus flytrap, sundew, etc. And these plants um, eat insects as a source of nitrogen. One important point over here is insectivorous plants can photosynthesize, yet they feed on insects to fulfill the requirement of their nitrogen. Now let's take the example of pitcher plant. The leaves of the pitcher plant are modified into pitcher-like structure and the tip of the leaf forms the lid. When an insect sits on the pitcher plant, the lid closes and the insect is trapped inside the pitcher plant. The pitcher plant secretes some enzymes and the insect gets digested. And the next one is saprophytic plants. These plants also exhibit heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Saprophytic plants feed on dead plants and animals, for example, mushroom, bread molds, etc. These saprophytic plants release some juices that changes the dead plants and animals into a liquid form. And then these saprophytic plants absorb the liquid form and obtain nutrition from it. And the next one is symbiotic plants. Symbiotic relationship is the relationship between two living organisms. Um, these two living organisms mutually benefit from each other. Um, an example of symbiotic relationship is lichen. This is the association between algae and fungi. Algae being an autotroph synthesizes food. And fungi being a saprophyte absorb water and minerals and provide shelter to the algae. Thus they are associated with each other. Such plants that are associated with each other are known as symbiotic plants. Do you know that symbiotic association is very helpful for the farmers? Soil contains many minerals, 
such as potassium, phosphorus, nitrogen, etc. Among all this, nitrogen is very important for the growth of plants as well as synthesize of proteins. But plants cannot directly break in gaseous nitrogen from the air. So there are some certain bacteria present in the soil such as rhizobium that helps in converting the gaseous nitrogen into a form that can easily be absorbed by the plant. This type of bacteria are found in the roots of leguminous plants such as peas, beans, etc. Thus, this rhizobium and this leguminous plants are associated with each other. The leguminous plants provide shelter, food, etc. to the rhizobium, whereas rhizobium fixes the nitrogen as, and thus helps in replenishing the soil. That is why farmers grow a leguminous crop in between two main crops to maintain the fertility of the soil. Thus, symbiotic association is very important for the farmers. With this, we have completed the first chapter, Nutrition in Plants. If you like this video, then click on like button and to stay with me, please click on subscribe button. Thank you.